Good morning. Good morning. Can't tell you how uncomfortable this is. No one in Washington ever starts anything on time. So for you all to be here, I mean, this is shocking. Uh, welcome to the 32nd celebration of the Congressional Art Competition. Uh, my name is Mark Strand, and I'm the president of the Congressional Institute. The Congressional Institute is proud to sponsor the Congressional Art Competition. Uh, this is the 10th year we've been involved in this important celebration. Uh, from the beginning of the Republic, our leaders have understood the importance of the arts. George Washington himself wrote that to encourage literature and the arts is a duty which every good citizen owes his country. Well, over two centuries uh, later, you, the winners of the 2013 Congressional Art Competition, take your place among thousands of other good citizens who have enriched our country with your art. We could not be happier to recognize your talents and your contributions to the American culture. It's important to put in perspective just how great an honor your country is bestowing on you by having your pictures hang in the halls of the Capitol. Even each state is only allowed limited to two statues placed in the Capitol, and other major paintings and works of art must be approved by an act of Congress. So this is not an honor taken lightly. Uh, besides the millions of visitors to the Capitol who will see your artwork, the House of Representatives also will run an online gallery of your paintings on the front page of the House's website, which is visited by more than 10 million people every year. So millions of people are going to have the opportunity to see your art because of your accomplishment today. <clears throat> so because of this, I also want to thank the people who make the exhibit of your artwork possible. Uh, the curator, the architect of the Capitol, Dr. Barbara Wolanin, and her staff have a monumental task of caring for and hanging your artwork. Uh, and once you see in the Cannon Tunnel, if you haven't had a chance to go out there yet, but once you see that, you'll appreciate what an undertaking it is. Also, the Honorable Stephen Ayers, the architect of the Capitol, and Mr. William Wodermer, the House Superintendent, and their staffs have been tremendously helpful in preparing this exhibition as well. This year is the best participation level we've ever seen. Of the 441 congressional offices, 421 have participated and are represented here today. Uh, something this big does not happen by itself. Uh, this massive undertaking would not have been possible had it not been for the hard work of several people. Nicole Petroff from Representative Robert Adderholt's office and Jack Ari Ariuga from Representative Suzanne Bonamici's office uh, have worked tirelessly and very effective to organize this national program. I would also like to recognize Dan Risco of the Congressional Institute, and especially I want to recognize Tim Lang of the Congressional Institute, who put in countless hours of hard work to make this day possible, going back and starting in January. He's been at the center of this project, coordinating with each congressional office and each student winner. So thank you, Tim. Uh, we're going to have uh, some good uh, speakers this morning. We're going to hear from some of the people who also sponsor this uh, Congressional Art Competition. Uh, we're going to hear from the two Congress people who are the sponsors of this year's art competition. Uh, Congressman Adderholt will be here first, and Congresswoman Bonamici will be here towards the end. Uh, but they're both going to speak. And we're going to have a fantastic presentation by an artist, uh, which is something we do every year as part of the celebration. Uh, but for me, I stand in awe of your talent and your courage in putting your art before the nation. Uh, the great poet Robert Frost said that artists always are believers ahead of your evidence. He said, what evidence was that there that I could write a poem? He said, I just believed it. The most creative thing in us, he said, is to believe art into existence. Well, thank you for believing your art into existence. On behalf of those involved in this project, Congratulations for being a winner of the 2013 Congressional Art Competition. Now it's my pleasure to introduce one of the people who helped make this possible, Monica, Monica Del Rio. She's a specialist in community affairs and grassroots department of Southwest Airlines, which is a Fortune 500 company. Monica began a career at Southwest Airlines in 2008 and focuses her time and talent on Southwest employee engagement and grassroots advocacy programs. She's been a long part of this program. She's been with us every year for a long time. Uh, and it's my pleasure to introduce Monica Del Rio. Good morning, and welcome to our nation's capital. I'm Monica Del Rio, and I'm so proud to be here on behalf of Southwest Airlines. This is the 12th year that Southwest Airlines has supported the Congressional Art Competition, demonstrating our commitment to the arts and youth leadership. And we're so proud to be here today alongside the 2013 co-chairs and join them in congratulating you on this great accomplishment. 
So by now, I hope you've had a chance to view your artwork on display in the tunnel and um, hope you know that at any given point during the day, people are discussing and admiring your artwork. I had the opportunity after college to work as a congressional intern, and one of the main duties of a congressional intern is to host constituents that come in from the district and give them a tour of the Capitol, which I'm sure many of you have enjoyed during this trip. And the tour always begins the same way, and that's in the tunnel where your artwork is now being displayed. And it was um, so neat to be able to watch these people who are excited to view the Capitol and tour slow down and really take in the artwork and appreciate it and discuss it. And it was um, inevitable that every single person would ask to see the artwork from their district and look at the artwork and take great pride in knowing that somebody from their hometown had their artwork on display in the Capitol. So you should be very proud of that and take great pride in this outstanding accomplishment. So we're proud to be here to celebrate with you and hope you enjoy your time in Washington, D.C. Congratulations again. Also, I forgot to mention, before we finish, we're going to show all the art, too, by the way. We'll have a slideshow and you get to see all the pictures. That's the best part anyway, better than the speeches. Um, our next guest, though, will have a great speech. No. Uh, Rina Gaitonde I was born and raised in Mumbai, India. Uh, Rina is with the Savannah College of Arts and Design. This is where we talk about scholarships. Um, she uh, completed her undergraduate degree in computer graphics technology in the US and worked in the architectural visualization industry for three years and then moved to Savannah. Uh, not only is she the senior enrollment representative for the Savannah College of Art and Design. She has a personal connection since her husband completed his MFA in graphic design from the same school and is currently a faculty member in Savannah, location in the graphic design department. Please welcome Rena Gaitonde. Good afternoon. I'm Rena Gaitonde and I'm delighted to be here today representing the Savannah College of Art and Design. Congratulations to each of you for your accomplishment in your district. SCAD is pleased to recognize your district first place award in the annual Congressional Art Competition as an outstanding achievement. I'm pleased to announce that as a district first place winner, you may be eligible to receive a $3,000 scholarship to SCAD should you apply and be accepted for enrollment. Also, accepted students may be eligible for additional scholarships based on their academic credentials, documented awards and recognition, extracurricular activities, any volunteer or professional experience, and your talents. As the premier provider of higher education in creative fields, SCAD is uniquely qualified to prepare talented students for professional careers. The university offers distinctive yet complementary locations in Savannah, Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, Hong Kong, that's our newest location, online through SCAD e-learning and our study abroad opportunity in Lacoste, France. The education and career preparation of each SCAD student is cultivated and nurtured by our very own faculty with exceptional credentials and valuable creative industry experience. Through individual attention in an inspiring university environment and with advanced professional level technology, equipment, and resources, SCAD provides an exceptional education experience and unparalleled career preparation. Congratulations once again to each of the winners, and I hope to see some of you on campus. Thank you. One of the great things, we uh, hold the Congressional Art Competition while Congress is in session, which means there's a lot going on. And our next guest right now is, has rushed over here. He has a me uh, an amendment pending for a committee markup right now. Uh, but Congressman Robert Adderholt was sworn in to serve the ninth district term represented in January uh, from Alabama's fourth congressional district. Uh, Congressman Adderholt is a member of the powerful House Committee on Appropriations, uh, which has jurisdiction over funding the operation of the federal government. Uh, he's the chairman of the subcommittee on agriculture, and he's also a member of the Commerce, State, and Justice and Science, Commerce, Justice and Science Subcommittee and the Homeland Security Subcommittee. Uh, 
He uh, basically focuses on bringing fiscal responsibility and truth in budgeting to the federal government that operates with it, uh, trying to get the federal government to operate within its means. Um, the, he basically, I've known him for years. He, he's a kind of person who tries to bring common sense solutions to the problems here in Washington. Uh, he's a longstanding member of this, a great supporter of the arts. Please welcome Congressman Robert Adderholt of Alabama. Well, good morning. Uh, thank you. For, it's uh, great to be here. Uh, as mentioned, I'm uh, about to go into a markup in a, uh, my, uh, one of our uh, committees that I serve on in preparation. So, uh, but I did want to take time to come down for a few minutes this morning and just to welcome you to the United States Capitol and uh, to being with us here this week. I also want to thank uh, all the ones that's, that's played a role in this. Uh, my, uh, as you know, there are, there are two co-chairs, a Democrat and Republican, each year that uh, co-chairs co this event. Um, Mrs. Suzanne Bonamici from Oregon is uh, the Democrat co-chair. I'm the Republican co-chair. And our staffs have been working together for months on this to make sure this is a success. And so uh, it is uh, uh, all coming to fruition today. So uh, thank you for being here. I also want to thank the, the, the staff on both uh, uh, Congresswoman Bonamici's staff and my staff, uh, on her staff, uh, uh, Jack uh, Arguiaga, and on my staff, Nicole Petroff, uh, have been worked uh, very extensively together to, uh, again, make this uh, event that hopefully that you'll remember for a long time. So uh, let me just say congratulations for being here. Uh, you wouldn't be here unless you, uh, of course, uh, did outstanding work in your particular congressional district, and uh, that says a whole lot. Uh, I've been involved with uh, the art competition since I was first elected back in 1996. Uh, my first art competition to uh, host in the congressional district I represent in northern Alabama was uh, in 1997, and uh, as my predecessor did before me. And uh, this has been a time-honored tradition. It started in the House uh, when I was in high school uh, in, in 1982. Um, unfortunately, I'm not an artist, and I never participated in this program. Uh, but uh, that's why I'm, I'm very impressed with all of your work, because uh, certainly uh, uh, my uh, uh, talent is not anything like yours, so uh, I really can appreciate the work that you do. Uh, but, of course, here this week we have uh, Alaska to uh, uh, Alabama, we have New York to Oklahoma, we have collages, photographs, computer graphics, uh, drawings, uh, and uh, just uh, various things from uh, of uh, some work that has been submitted by students uh, and high school students across the country. Uh, I'm not sure you've had an opportunity to walk through the Cannon Tunnel or not yet. If you've not, I'm sure this will be on part of the agenda for the day, but it is absolutely impressive to see all the work that's hanging. And uh, again, when we walk down that hallway to go into votes there in the Capitol complex, we're reminded of, the, of all the talented work that, goes, that has gone into making that possible. Um, art continues to be a great thing for our communities uh, and uh, our schools. Uh, if you hadn't thanked your art teacher back uh, in your home uh, states, uh, when you go back, thank them for the work that they do, uh, for the time that they take to make sure that art is a, a critical part of your day-to-day uh, -day activities. Uh, where, wherever life may lead you, uh, whether you continue to pursue art or business, uh, literature or engineering, or even law, I would encourage you to follow your dreams and keep your creative spirits alive. Uh, I do want to leave you with one last thought. Henry David Thre uh, Thoreau once said, this world is but a canvas to our imagination. So thank you for sharing your imagination uh, with us this week and all those that uh, visit with the Capitol on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, thank you for part being a participant in this year's art discovery. I hope you uh, have an enjoyable time this week uh, here in Washington, D.C. It's, uh, a, as I say, a real uh, honor to uh, welcome you here to Washington, D.C. Uh, on behalf of, uh, of uh, my constituents from the 4th District of Alabama. Uh, so best of luck to you in all that you do. May God bless you and may God best bless these United States of America. Thank you. Uh, you know, he's not, when he talks about thanking his staff, uh, the staff is sort of the glue that holds the Capitol together. And there, there are about 13,000 staffers in the House, but 
the individual staff members are the people who really make these things happen, because members of Congress, of course, are going back and forth to their districts, and they have to vote, and they have committee meetings. Uh, so when you see the staffers in the blue shirts, uh, you know, thank them, because they're the people who really make these things happen here in Washington. Our next guest uh, is uh, the first time Adobe's been a representative here at the, the art competition. Uh, I am particularly grateful, my daughter, I can't draw stick figures, so, you know, I, I admire your work. My daughter was a graphic artist, and she's now risen. She started out with artwork, and she's now risen. She's the director of marketing for um, a company, mostly because of the art she did. But the tools she used were most, almost always provided by Adobe. Now, Tacey Trowbridge leads Adobe's academic program group. Her team engages and inspires educators and students around the world to become creators and not just consumers of digital media. Uh, prior to joining Adobe, Tacey led national programs and organizations to provide professional development for educators to develop curriculum, to design online learning, and to conduct research. Uh, she worked for the University of California, uh, TeachScape, Stanford University's Persuasive Technology Lab, and San Francisco area schools. Uh, Tacey earned her BA from Wesleyan University in Connecticut and her MA from Stanford School of Education and Learning. Uh, please welcome Tacey Trowbridge. Thank you. It's a tremendous honor to have an opportunity to speak with you all today, and especially since so many of you are creators. You have taken an idea, made it real, polished it, refined it, and it's resonated. You've had an audience for your work and will continue to have a huge audience for your work. And so I'm really privileged to be able to speak to you, to congratulate you for the honor, and to tell you that I look forward to seeing more work from you as you go on in, in your careers. I want to talk a little bit today about the importance of the work that you're doing within the context as we see it. As we, all right, let's see, let me get this to advance. Well, you may just get to see the first slide and that's fine. Oh, there we go, great. Um, Adobe sits squarely at the intersection of art and technology. I think it's a very exciting space to be in. We see every day, every day the value of design, the importance of creative thinking, and the impact that that can have on the way in which people engage with technology. As we look at the work that you've done, I think one of the things that's exciting to me is that we create professional level tools that are world class, but what's really interesting about our tools is what people do with them, rather than the tools themselves. And so again, I look forward to the work that you will continue to provide. We aim to have students be not just consumers of content, but creators, and you all are already exemplifying that, uh, something we feel very lucky to be able to participate in. We're also pleased to support Cong Congresswoman Bonamici in her work to add an A into STEM education. We see the importance of adding art, design, creativity into critical fields in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. It's not just Adobe that feels that this is important. Oops, let me go back one. Ah, there we go. Well, we'll start here. Um, there, some interesting research has been done around creativity. A recent research study called The State of Create looked at how people evaluate creativity and the importance of creativity. 80% felt that creativity was really critical for future economic growth. A 2010 study that IBM did around creativity, well, it wasn't actually about, around creativity, it was about the future economic growth. They interviewed CEOs from all around the world. The top leadership competency that they identified was creativity as the most important in terms of success, the need for innovation, for driving the economies of the future. 62% of folks believe that creativity is being stifled in the education system. Your example that that's not entirely true, but I think one of the, the real areas of concern for us is that there's a gulf between the kinds of education that students are getting around creativity and the clear need for creativity in the economies of the future. Perhaps I'm pushing the wrong button. So, I apologize for the, the, slide, the, slow, the slow slides, but I wanted to be sure to indicate to you all how much we believe in you, how much we're grateful for the work that you've done. Uh, we hope that over the next year you will explore your membership to Creative Cloud. One of the really exciting communities that Adobe engages in is Behance, which is an amazing professional community of designers and creators. Please explore the portfolios and add your own. We're really interested to see the work that you've done and look forward to continuing to follow your careers as you go forward. 
Remember that creativity is critical. The skills that you've developed, what you've done by creating, is something that will carry with you for your entire careers and hope will lead to tremendous success both for us as a nation as we try to solve really important problems and then success for yourselves as you continue on in your careers. Thank you. So that's a problem when you're a great software company and you have to show your, your presentation to somebody other company's product, right? So <laughs> See, Adobe should make presentation software there. <laughs> uh, we, the next guest is a real treat for us. Uh, every year when we do this, we have a workshop. And that's where we bring an artist who's been successful and has done a lot of things. And the hope is to give you some ideas and some inspiration. Uh, Cal Foray uh, was born uh, from generational artists, uh, reared in Athens, Alabama and in a, a graduate of Auburn University. For over 17 years, she has successfully taught kids, adults, individuals, and groups in her fun, demonstrative style. She has worked from a unique and beautiful studio on the north side of the Courthouse Square in her hometown for the last 12 years, and recently relocated to Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, like a great Southern writer, Carol presents her Southerness in a heartwarming passion for bringing out life on a canvas through her innate ability with color and light as evidenced in commissioned portraits of people and outstanding portraits of great homes and buildings of significance we all know and love. Uh, Carol has been chosen as poster artist for many events over the years, including Huntsville's uh, Arts Festival, Liz Hurley's Breast Cancer Run. Uh, she is a Southern Living featured artist in October 2008 uh, and has graced the cover of several magazines as well, as beautiful specialty billboards from North Alabama to North Carolina use her art. Uh, her talents also used in modeling and photography. Uh, with her identical twin sister, Carol, Claire, Claire, sorry, um, who's also an artist in Chicago, uh, Carol has hosted students on painting journeys in the Tuscany region of Italy, uh, in Cortona, uh, where they have returned over the years and have become our special visitors and friends from Alabama uh, to the Italian families they have met and, and made friends with. Uh, please welcome our, our guest artist today, Carol Frey. It's not a problem to be double mic'd, but uh, I do plan to walk around and actually paint for you today. But anyway, I want to welcome all of you honorees to Washington. What an honor. Um, I want to thank Congressman Adderholt from the great state of Alabama, and I believe uh, he's a big Auburn fan like I am, because I met him at an Auburn game not too long ago. Um, Congressman Bonamici from Oregon for co-chairing this wonderful competition. Um, Tim Lang, oh, you've been great. Thank you so much for getting me here and getting all the details wrapped up. And, and precious Nicole Petroff from Huntsville, thank you so much for actually giving me the call to come and have this wonderful opportunity to speak. Um, but back to you guys, um, I stand before you as a fellow creator, an artist, and I just am so fired up for you to have this opportunity. Can you believe you're sitting here with art here in the Capitol? I mean, can we have a collective wow? This is awesome. So I just applaud you. Um, um, if I had the chance, I'm just the kind of person I would give anything to be able to uh, speak to each one of you in and, and front of your piece and just hear all about how you came up with it and uh, the creative mind you used to, to make it happen. Um, Mark, thank you so much for the introduction. I know that was a crazy sort of written bio. My, my father, who is a, a writer, uh, insisted on writing my bio for me, so uh, it was a little bit, you know, of a creative strand. Um, but I am Carol Foray. I've been a professional artist for about 23 years, um, and that's literally half my life, because today is my 46th birthday, so <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, um, as Mark said, I am an identical twin, and uh, she couldn't be here today, but I do have my two precious daughters over there who were uh, 
who I'm thrilled to have with me today. Um, but anyway, let's talk a little bit about art and what it does and what uh, you are stepping into as young people uh, in this world of what art actually does for people. <clears throat> it gives, it shares, it inspires. And to think that I've been a part of that for 23 years and that you are embarking on something like that is so exciting to me. And I hope that it is to you. You know, art heals. Uh, there, there are such things as art therapists who work to help heal sick people through art. It makes you think. It makes you add to the beauty of what this world offers already. Think about that. I can't go any further really to talk about the beauty of the world without talking about the core of my creativity and my life than to talk about the great creator himself, our God. Our country was founded on God. Uh, let's go further, our world was created by God. So go with me for a minute. If you're not a believer in that way, but entertain the idea of what I'm gonna pursue these, this line of thinking on. We collaborate with the great creator. Isn't that something amazing to believe? I mean, what a calling and what a responsibility. Um, that's how I look at it in my art. Um, when you think about creation in general, you know, in Huntsville, we have had just some of the biggest clouds. And I just, as Mark said, I just relocated and I live in a beautiful condo building and I've enjoyed sitting on the rooftop and uh, actually spent a lot of time up there writing my talk and all of that and I couldn't help but notice the beautiful clouds this whole past week and uh, my girls know I go crazy driving the car I, I shouldn't I shouldn't even say this in front of all of you but shooting pictures of clouds and you know they change so much and a lot of times I use those for references for paintings and stuff so uh, but you think about clouds and uh, mountains and then you hone in on a beautiful flower I know some of you in macro photography have uh, taken uh, lands excuse me, landscape pictures, uh, wildlife things, and, and you see the intricate detail in uh, just the most amazing, beautiful creatures and flowers and plants and trees, and I just think that is just so amazing. Then you think about the human body, the miracle that it is. And I know that uh, through my studies over the years, uh, Michelangelo has always been just one of the, the great artists that I have studied and watched and tried to emulate. And he had a great, great, amazing way of capturing uh, the human body. And if you'll notice, if you've ever been to Rome and seen uh, the Sistine Chapel and some of this beautiful statue, the statue of David. One of the uh, fun things that he did was almost always sculpt and paint bodies with every muscle flexed. Wouldn't it be neat to walk around like that? Just be able to look that way? Anyway, uh, just a little bit of my background. I want to, in general, I want today, my goal today is to just inspire you simply with who I am and my background, whether it be impressive or not. I don't know that, I've never looked at it as very impressive, but uh, you know, here I am in Washington, D.C., gosh. <laughs> so, um, you know, things, the stars align and you just never know where you'll end up. But I did have a very happy childhood. Um, I'm one of four kids, and I have an identical twin who is also an artist. We do the exact same thing, and she's in Chicago, though. So um, here we got some Chicagoans over here. Awesome. Any Alabama people in here? All right. Good deal. Okay. 
Um, but uh, I grew up and had a great childhood, um, great education in Athens, Alabama. I went to Auburn University and studied interior design. Um, my father uh, sort of steered us uh, towards something that would make money instead of art. And so that's what my sister and I both chose. And uh, I did, we both got degrees in interior design and then immediately hit the easel <laughs> after we graduated. So actually I did work a year in design, but um, you know, I thought I ought to give it a chance. And then uh, took a, a time and decided I was just gonna paint full time. And that's when I started having children and it was a great way to, uh, you know, be able to make a living and uh, raise children. So it's, it's a neat thing. Um, during the last 23 years, I have had my own studio and gallery um, for 21 years. And I just decided to give up my gallery and simplify and paint uh, at home and with uh, the internet now, you know, you can get your work out and, and show in galleries and that sort of thing, thing. So I'm gonna sort of embark on that thing for now. And I'm really excited about doing it. But I loved having my own gallery. It was great to meet people, to constantly have a, a place to show your work and um, plan events and that sort of thing. So, but it can be costly, so, uh, I've shown my work throughout the Southeast, uh, lots of places in the Midwest, and I've got clients who've collected my work um, all over the U.S. and a few worldwide. <coughs> Excuse me. I've taught painting for over 17 years, and I love teaching. Um, my sister and I started a few years ago taking students to Italy she has uh, pursued her master's and uh, got a lot of her education over there. So it's been a, a treat to take students in uh, the fall of each year to study in a beautiful place like Italy and um, come back with a whole new uh, just horizon of creativity with the light of Italy. It, it's awesome. Um, I've been featured in TV news, print news, including Southern Living, and um, Alabama Public TV did a feature on me that will air this fall, so that's exciting. All right. Um, I want to um, talk to you a little bit, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I've got uh, dryness going on, about uh, things that you can do as an artist um, as you progress. How many, can I just get a show of hands? How many uh, students here have really started beginning to show your work besides here at the Capitol? Anybody? So a good number. That's fantastic. Um, that is a great, great way to get your name out there um, there's uh, all kinds of things about, that you can learn about approaching galleries and uh, seeing about what they can do for you. Uh, if you do that sort of thing, I, I, from my years of experience, I would uh, encourage you to have your portfolio ready. Um, call them and ask what days they showed their, or that they view portfolios. Always be very, um, let, you know, accommodating to their schedules and that sort of thing. Be ready with ideas when you go for an interview or a por portfolio showing. Um, you can come up with ideas for events that they may haven't even thought of. And if they are open to those events, then you can agree to do things like share in um, designing your invitation or helping fund half the costs of your invites or the food or things like that. So I would like to encourage you to take that innovation you've got to, uh, you know, get your foot in the door in places that can 
help further showing your work. Um, one thing I did uh, several years ago that was sort of innovative, and it was really my first step into Washington, was um, in Huntsville, we have the amazing Children's Advocacy Center that Congressman Bud Kramer was, a, you know, it was his baby. And um, I did a painting of that building, and you'll see some of my paintings shortly. I have a crazy kind of style. I do houses and buildings, and I did a large painting of that, and someone bought it but donated it to him. And it hung in the, his office here for many years, so that was pretty cool. But, uh, and it was kind of odd, yesterday I saw him on the plane uh, coming up and got to speak to him and uh, he remembered me and just talked about how his painting has gone with him from office to office and how much he still loves it and gets comments on it and all that and you know, that was just another fun little thing and always great to see him and um, it's funny, I just learned I just live a couple of streets over from him in Huntsville now. so. That was kind of fun. Uh, let's see. Let me show you a few pieces of my work. There's that car. Um, you know, people, as you can imagine, uh, as you, oh, thank you. You're so sweet. Thank you. We, get, we have allergies in Alabama, and I think they followed me up here. Um, you know, as you, as you pursue your art, um, inevitably you'll be asked, well, what kinds of things do you paint? Um, and something funny yesterday, uh, Sarah in the taxi getting from the airport to here, um, the taxi driver was talking about Andy Warhol and he said, yeah, who would have thought that some people would appreciate the painting of a shoe. And I thought, you know, I just kind of smiled and uh, he, start, he asked the inevitable question later, so what do you paint? I said, shoes. And <laughs> so, because I have. Uh, in fact, I think, I think Nicole Petroff has a, sh a shoe painting of mine from years ago. Uh, but I don't actually have a shoe painting. Do I point this that way? Yeah. There we go. Um, I paint places that I love, and uh, this is Cafe Du Monde in New Orleans. Um, I shot a photo just up, from, I don't know, how many, who all has been to Cafe Du Monde? Oh boy, wouldn't that be nice about now? Um, but I was just ordering and turned around and snapped a picture and um, then came and went home and painted that. And that's a large piece, it's about four feet tall. and three feet wide. Um, and then um, I was li a licensed Auburn University painter for a, about a year. I chose to do that and um, painted Cam Newton, our claim to fame for our national championship in 2010, War Eagle. Uh, but uh, that's uh, another large piece that I did, it was about four feet square. And there's another one of Cam. He, he's brought me lots of money. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, what's funny is uh, in getting licensed, which is a whole lot of bureaucracy, which is, we're familiar with around here, uh, there's, um, I had to get licensed with Cam Newton himself and it was just kind of funny uh, sending him his royalty check of $92 when he's got <laughs> gazillions. I thought I'd probably rack up his bookkeeping with my little measly amount, but anyway. Um, let's see, next. Um, I do a lot of house portraits, <clears throat> and you can see um, they're kind of a skewed perspective. I do know perspective, because um, interior design majors, you know, we had to use the the drawing board and the straight lines and rulers and all of that. But this is actually a home in Huntsville, Alabama, downtown. It was a, a, neat, a neat home, I liked it a lot. 
And then this one, this is, this is actually one of my best friend's home and, uh, in one of the swanky parts of Huntsville on a mountain. Uh, and it's a large piece. It's about, I think it was a three by four foot painting as well. <coughs> but uh, very, I use a lot of color and texture. These, these are mostly oil paintings, but I do use acrylic. When I paint today, I'll be using acrylic just for the ease of it. Uh, and then we've got Louis Armstrong. Um, that was probably uh, this size painting. That was fun to do. And then Elton John. Elton's in my condo. <laughs> he is about six feet tall and three or four feet wide. So that was, that was a fun one to do. It took me a long time to do that one. And then, let's see, Jesus. I, I do a lot of uh, Jesus paintings. I've actually uh, live performance painted Jesus before for, uh, I believe it was a Maundy Thursday service. That was a very exciting opportunity to do. I got to paint um, with a hundred person choir like I was painting. They were over here for a 30-minute choral presentation. And uh, what a treat for me. I totally, there was probably more people in the congregation. And people were like, weren't you scared to do that in front of you? I was lost. I was in the zone. And it was just a treat for me to have live choral music painting. And then it wasn't this face of Jesus, but it was a crucifixion face come to life and oh that, that was just just amazing uh, just the response and the people coming up and the men every man that came up to talk to me just in tears and uh, that was just a special uh, opportunity um, I think we had a detail it doesn't show that great on the screen but but again this piece is about six feet tall and three feet wide and it was done all in palette knife. Who has worked with a palette knife? Anybody? You know, you get that great impasto uh, texture, and um, it was uh, really chunky. You can see a little bit of um, random color. There's some blue there. Um, that canvas, uh, as I've taught classes, over the years, my students come in, and uh, in my then this is in my private studio. But uh, that canvas laid against the wall for several months, maybe a year and a half or so. But in order to not waste their paint when we're done, I would always get them to go paint that canvas. So it was every color under the sun, and just rich with texture. And finally, one day I figured out what I wanted to paint on it, and of course. Jesus came up on it, but it was great to allow some of that color to come through and uh, show that cool scumbling effect. We'll talk about scumbling in a minute. Okay, and then uh, that's a shot of me painting in Italy. Uh, my sister and I take the students to a town called Cortona. Has anyone ever heard of Cortona? All right. Um, that program it, uh, that my sister did is fantastic. It's through the University of Georgia. And they have a, I think it's a four and a half acre campus on the top of Cortona, which is a, a, an old Etruscan hill town uh, in the Tuscany region. But, uh, so there's plenty of Americans going, walking around Cortona all the time. But I highly recommend anyone visiting there. It's a beautiful place. And this is a painting, a few paintings I've done since going to Italy. You know, all the little fiats everywhere are fun. And then, let's see. Okay, who, who knows Alabama Shakes in here? Um, they are from my hometown. So, uh, I did, not that I know them. I do not know any of them at all. Uh, but after the Grammys, they were, you know, they were nominated for Best New Group or whatever that is. Uh, 
this year. They didn't get it, but uh, as I was watching that, I told my daughter, I said, I've got to paint Brittany um, before anybody else does. And so that week after that, um, <clears throat> I got in the studio and found, you know, if, for those of you who know her, she is quite the uh, passionate singer and performer, but uh, found a great picture of her and just painted it and worked on it, just had a ball. You know, had the Alabama Shakes playing in the studio and everything. And uh, then, let's see, do we have that? Uh, she came in and bought it. So um, that was a big treat. Actually, her mother did. <coughs> she uh, tricked Brittany into getting out. Brittany's not home very often because they're touring all the time. So uh, she had to trick Brittany to even get out of the house and tell her she was going to eat lunch in... Uh, Decatur, Alabama, but they swung by my gallery downtown and she came in. So she was a little incognito with her hair pulled back and everything, but she walked in and she was like, wow. and I was like, wow, you know, I said, I'm so starstruck and everything. And she goes, she just laughed and said, oh, well, I'm, I just can't believe that I have a Carol Foray painting of me. So um, I guess it was mutual, but I, I, I know I was more starstruck. She, she was awesome. So that was a lot of fun. And then I, this was my fault. I got that out of order, Tim. But that was another painting from Italy. A uh, little cat. There's cats everywhere. They're fun to follow. And, and then let's see, what do we have? There's what I'm about to paint. Okay, so, so I have just moved to Huntsville. This is so like me. <clears throat> I want to, uh, I've done several, Huntsville's only about 30 miles from my hometown, so I've grown up going and, uh, you know, to the orthodontist there for how, how many years, girls, and uh, going there all the time, and a lot of my clientele live there, so I've painted lots of things of Huntsville, um, the beautiful downtown buildings are some of my favorites, but um, today, I'm going to uh, leave that on the screen, and uh, that's what I'm going to end up painting, because we are we are called the Rocket City, the home of NASA. So, but that's all the work I'm going to show you. I wanted to talk a little bit about promoting your work. Um, that is a an art form in and of itself. Um, I, just another show of hands, how many of you artists feel great about talking about your work? A few, a few of you. Um, I, there, there are a lot of us who want to uh, paint, 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 and then, you know, set it out there and run. <laughs> and I know that feeling. Um, and then hope we get rave reviews. But... Uh, I just want to encourage you that through your art career that you learn to um, be confident about your work enough to talk about it. Um, people love to hear about uh, the stories behind your paintings and how they came to be. Uh, when someone buys your work, they love buying from an artist that they've gotten to know a little bit. I hear that all the time. Um, but to talk confidently about your painting, yet humbly. <laughs> There's an art to that. Um, you know, as I said, you know, I'm, I'm, I have a strong faith, and I, I fully believe that everything that I paint is God-inspired. I mean, uh, well, I'm not an angry painter. You're not going to find, you know, uh, angry kind of subject matter in my work, which is, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but for me, that's not what you're going to see. So um, <clears throat> it's easy for me to, to always know that, that God helped me get my expression out. And a lot of times I pray about what to paint. Um, so that's always a good thing. Um, I did want to explain that I do in my career a lot of show paintings, but I do a lot of commission work. So there, you know, show paintings are things that, you know, I come up with to do. Commissions are what 
I love because uh, that's what actually my bread and butter is. They're already sold. They are, I know exactly what I'm going to be doing. Uh, and sometimes it's, it, it diminishes some of the creativity. But what I believe is that the moment that I finally get to start that painting, whatever it is, that's when my creativity comes. So I think that's where things got skewed perspective over the years. I do a lot of homes. Those are great and they're a lot of fun. I have dogs on my easel right now. I've got four dogs to do for a uh, family. And they're a lot of fun. Um, and have a great online presence in promoting your work. Um, there's no excuse to not have a website these days. Um, do a lot of you have websites already? Anybody? A few? Um, what's even a bigger not excuse to have is a blog. Um, I know blogs seem a little bit outdated or whatever, but I have been blogging for many years. Uh, you know, it's so easy to get your painting done, take a picture of it, put it on your blog, and then talk all about it. There you go, there's your promotion right there that people can go and look and, um, you know, and even comment on your work. You can get feedback that way. And you can certainly use Facebook like that. Now, who has a Facebook in here? <laughs> okay, I knew, I knew that would be the case. Facebook is a great way to uh, promote your work. Um, it's almost as good as your website or a blog. And also, whenever you get projects or decide you want to do projects, always follow through on them. I know that seems so simple, but um, at the same time, don't commit to any products that you can't follow through on, because in the end, that's just going to hurt you and people won't call you back. Um, let's see, I'm soon about to paint. I wanted to just talk about sharing um, in, in the way of teaching. Uh, that has been just such a great, um, I don't even know what to call it, just a great career I've had in teaching. Um, there's nothing like having students who you have opened doors with to, to show them either technique or just to see things differently or uh, with a lot of the adults that I've taught to allow themselves to be creative again. Um, when you get to be my age and older, you've got baggage in your background that uh, someone maybe criticized a painting or a drawing or uh, told you that you couldn't paint, you know, go do something else or whatever that, that really uh, inhibit your creativity for years and decades to come. So I have uh, enjoyed teaching adults in that manner and doing what I have titled creative spirit workshops that we learn to revive our creative juices again. All right. Well, I'm ready to paint. Um, I'm going to be over there and I'd like at any time while I'm painting because they're going to uh, have it on the screen I'd love for you to ask questions, anything you want, you know, about technique. Um, I don't know, just whatever. I'm used to people looking over my shoulder. Um, Tim, if you don't mind, would you put the rock, keep the rocket picture up there? Excuse me? Oh, that's okay. Okay, I have it on my phone. I'll, I'll just look at it on my phone. That's fine. Okay. All right. Okay, I hope this uh, works out great. Um, like I said, I am going to be painting in acrylic. Um, I prefer oil, but um, today, so that maybe 
somebody takes this painting home, it'll be dry. All right, the, who wants to know the colors I brought? Just, yeah, who guessed? Wait, don't. It does look like I pretty much just brought red, yellow, blue and brought my primary colors and then I brought black, white, and some brown. I like a limited palette like this anyway. I do have a few more colors on my canvas. I mean, on my palette at home. All right. All right. So here we go. Let's see what we've got. That's kind of dark. <laughs> Doesn't that look fun? <laughs> okay, what I've done already is I've brought my canvas in toned already. Um, it's actually been several different colors, but when I decided what I was going to do, I, did, I went ahead and did somewhat of a cerulean blue background. What I the blue I have on my palette now is ultramarine. Um, I like to start off with the canvas already toned just to get the white gone and get a richer sense of texture as we go because we're automatically adding another layer of paint. And I bought me some new brushes for my birthday. <laughs> I'm notorious for ru ruining brushes. Um, and I actually do like cheaper brushes. These, these may be a little bit too nice for what I'm used to. <laughs> um, so I've worked a little there just at working in some background. I'm going to take my smaller brush and sort of map out the rocket just a little bit. All right. This is kind of a patriotic subject, don't you think? For our space program. You know, I drive by this beautiful rocket. It's, if you've never been to Huntsville, right there next to the interstate that is our interchange, there's this rocket and actually a smaller collection. I should know the name of this rocket, but I didn't do my research on that. Who knows, does anyone know the name of this big rocket that would be? I think that may be it. Thank you. That sounds the most familiar. But uh, it is just such a marvelous sight driving by it. Night or day, they have it lit so beautifully, and we're proud of our space program. And then we'll go kind of on up in there. Okay, so we have that sort of mapped out. The thing about acrylic and teaching is I've got that done and now I can go elsewhere and start working on the, um, <clears throat> the other aspects of the painting and get back and layer things on the rocket. All right. And down in here, we've got some dark, sort of mountains back there too.
pricing. <laughs> yes. Um, yes, that's a very good topic. When uh, I first started out years ago, I, uh, I, I, what I recall is that I was invited to do a little show and um, you know, you have to just come up with something. That's, that's really the bottom line when you start off pricing your work. And then the market is going to kind of determine down the road what you can charge. So say, say if you put a painting out for, a small one out for $100, it sells. OK, you know you can get that. You get a little body of work, and uh, you, you still have them priced around 100, 100 200 a piece, and, and most of them sell, then that's when you go, OK, my next show, I'm going to go up incrementally uh, to, say, maybe $200 for this. And, you, and that may be next year, time-wise. But so that's kind of what I did starting out. And then over the years, um, just about every year, I would go up on my prices. And um, I guess I have had the same price list for my work. The reason I have a list is because when people want commission work, you have to have something, a ballpark. And so I usually price by size. Um, most people want their homes or their dogs painted or something like that. But portraits of people are 100% more than the, the prices on that list. So does that kind of answer a little bit? Um, I would say that paintings that I used to charge five or six hundred dollars for at the beginning of my career, I might get seven thousand for now. So that makes a difference. <laughs> That means I can now pay for college tuition. <laughs> Part of it. So that's a good thing. I do. Um, many of my paintings are available as prints. And there's a website that I use called Fine Art America. If you haven't discovered that, that's a great place to sell your work. Um, I didn't do prints for a long time because I did until, well, let me just say, until they were able to start printing on canvas, I wasn't very interested in having my work printed. But they do that now, and of course, they can print on anything, it seems like. And so I, I like that. It's, it's nice. Can Fine Art America, they handle every uh, stage of the printing and selling and collecting money and all of that. And you do have to pay your taxes and all of that at the end of the year. But um, it's great. They just send you a check monthly. And you can, you can go. They give you lots of tools, too, to go in and promote your work. Uh, through little shout outs on Facebook or our announcement pages, I think they call call that. Can y'all see this okay? It's a little bit of a glare, isn't it? I wonder if I turn it. I'll show it in just a second when I'm done. Um, over the years, I have learned to paint very fast, I will tell you. Fast doesn't always mean great. <laughs> I've learned that. But uh, fast in order to show the technique, um, get the, the learning point across to students, and then let them go and paint. And I love painting fast. 
When I quit doing interior design back 23 years ago, I lived in the panhandle of Florida and um, took one painting class in acrylic and one photography class. I haven't talked much about my photography, but I've done it hand in hand with my painting over the years. Um, I love both of them, but I really, I really do paint more than I do photography. But uh, what was my point with all that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. My one class that I did in painting, my teacher really uh, required us to paint fast. He would say, uh, pick out your topic, and we'd get a photo or whatever, and then he'd say, paint that in 30 minutes. So you kind of learn to paint fast if you wanted a good grade. All right, so we have that going. Um, yeah, I do like Impressionism a lot. Um, and I, just studying them over the years very much. I would say that I'm most inspired more by um, Van Gogh and a lot of the texture and bold colors that he used. That just, it, and it's not a conscious thing. It's funny how um, my work just ends up being more like that. I might collect more Impressionism. <laughs> Excuse me, say that again. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I think we artists all have crazy uh, habits. All right. Well, I guess I've had moments over the years. I'm never one to say, oh, I've arrived, or oh, I'm famous now, or, you know, I mean, I've had my friends will say things like that or, or whatever, but um, I don't know. I will say one thing. I, my gallery in Athens has been uh, prominently placed on the square. We have a beautiful square, and um, I just closed it. And um, last, let's see, I guess last week, the Huntsville News uh, did a feature. They showed my gallery all closed. It had paper in the window. You know, I was just going to sneak out and move. <laughs> but, but on the news, they were, they, were, they were, I was a news feature saying that I was moving to Huntsville and leaving Athens and all that, and I was just... My sister was in town, and she looked at me, and she goes, you're a household name. <laughs> I said, I was, she was just kidding. But, you know, I watched that and thought, was that even newsworthy? Please, you know. But uh, so, you know, when little things like that happen, you just wonder. I don't know. But... But other things that can sort of indicate that is if, if your paintings are really selling, if you are, if the newspaper's calling wanting to do an article, or um, Southern Living calls and wants to do a feature on you, then, you know, you can decide maybe, maybe I've done some good things. Okay, I'm going to get booking down here. Let's see, that's the little bit of that mountain there in the background. I'm enjoying talking more than painting at the moment. And I'm trying not to make a mess on this uh, table and stage here. Oh, 
gosh, it's definitely changed over the years. Um, it was definitely a lot more realistic and uh, correct in perspective, things like that. Um, but it hasn't changed a lot. I mean, I think, I think a lot of times your style, something about your, the evolution of your style uh, stays with you. Uh, no. Um, most of the time I try to, but say that, that uh, Brittany Howard painting of Alabama Shakes, um, I found a royalty free picture on the web. There's so many pictures. And um, I used that. Um, I pretty much limit my career to painting in acrylic and oil. I dappled in encaustic painting. Anyone ever heard of that? With beeswax? My sister and I went to California and learned, a, took a workshop there and fell in love with it and all that and bought all the stuff and um, I just now gave it all away uh, when I moved. I think my condo building didn't, didn't want me using a blowtorch in the building. <laughs> in caustic painting, um, uh, in, I used a blowtorch to, to melt the layers of beeswax on boards and things like that. And it's, it's a lot of fun if you ever get the chance to do it. Okay, let's see. Something I, I said I was going to talk about was scumbling. When you're painting and you are uh, layering your paint over a previous layer of paint, you can choose to leave some of the um, paint showing through with a drier edge. And I'm doing that on here. Um, I don't know how well you can see that, but uh, anyway, that's a lot of fun. That creates a neat um, effect. Okay, now I'm going to work a little on some of these flagpoles. This shot of the rocket, I looked through so many pictures and even drove by taking my own. And... Uh, did not like those as much, but this one has our awesome flagpoles, the Alabama flag and the American flag in it. Whenever I'm teaching, I'm called the shadow police because we often get our highlights in there and feel like we're done, then we forget the shadows. And shadows are what ground our pieces. Um, you know, I, I've dabbled in it a little bit early on. In fact, that was really the very first um, workshop that I ever took. And it's not my taste, really. It's... It can be uncontrollable, and I'm a control freak. Sometimes, sorry. But I do like watercolor. I come from a family of, I have seven artists on my dad's side of the family that are all either painters or photographers mostly painters. And two of my aunts are in their 80s and still paint. And I just adore them and the inspiration they've been to me over the years. 
but one of them does some of the most beautiful watercolors. Okay, so I've gotten some good white on that rocket, and now I want to just kind of, it's got some pretty shadowing on it. Just add some of that. The, um, the spotlights on that are really neat at, at night. I was sort of inwardly crying because I left my palette knife at home, but I believe they would have relinquished it at the door anyway. <laughs> So I'm just going to try to pile it on here. You can pile paint on with a brush anyway. Oh, that's a good question. I know it's not now. It's not looking great. No, that is uh, an age-old dilemma of when is it finished. Uh, and I saw a quote, I, I've got to remember who said it at some point, but I don't now, but I'm going to use it anyway. Um, somebody said that a painting is never finished, but that it only stops at interesting places. Doesn't that make sense? Because I know if I think I have finished a painting, I, I almost always do this. I'll go to bed or go home or whatever and then come back and assess it again. And, you know, I might end up uh, adding to it or just doing, honestly, five more brush strokes and then you go, oh, okay, now, now I think it's finished. Or uh, I always reserve the right to keep painting on them or paint over them. <laughs> I do that a lot. There's a little bit of that flag. But that is a good question. One we'll scratch our heads over for a long time. Some of this intricate detail on the rocket, you don't want to be too, too um, detailed about. But we do have to get our uh, USA on it. Well, one thing I want to know is, and y'all can share ideas as I ask this, but I want to know what each of you is going to do after this amazing opportunity of showing in the Capitol. This is something to build your start on if you haven't really gotten it going just yet. Anybody? Anybody got an idea yet? I can give you an idea. Um, something uh, I would do is... Uh, be sure you get great pictures of you uh, at the Capitol, um, you with your painting in the tunnel, and great picture of your art, and put it on Facebook. 
Now the other thing you can do too, mix your, um, and, 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 and at the risk of not making it brag book, um, you can just express your gratitude to the Congressional Art Competition for having an amazing opportunity for you and your congressman and all of that. You see, it's kind of mixing your gratitude with your success. To me, that's always a great um, way to do your own little shout outs. All right, my last little get up here is something I like to do that I talked about. This is what I would typically do with a palette knife. Just really get that sky going. If this starts reminding you of somebody more famous than me, let me know. I think I'll put the super moon in. Did anybody take pictures of the moon this week? That was really something, wasn't it? All right. Okay, I'm almost done. Uh, it's got a little tiny bit of yellow in it. Mostly white, though. Utilize what? Horizontal points. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Oh, vanishing points. Oh, yes, yes, I do. Um, in a painting like this, um, not really seeing that. Um, you know, certain cityscapes or buildingscapes, I definitely keep that in mind especially when I'm doing proper perspective. <clears throat> yes, vanishing points. I discuss that when I teach perspective. Okay. And then my last little thing, let's see, let's get a Uh, if I'm working in oil, the, my very textured style, I don't have to wait for the layers to dry. I just start off with them a little thinner and then build up thick. And by this time, I don't really paint this fast in oil most of the time, but if I'm at this stage in an oil painting, I'll get my knife and, and acryl, I mean, uh, thick oil paint out and just layer, layer on that way.
Okay, I think that um, it's going to stop at an interesting point right now, <laughs> even as in time's up maybe. But um, I'll show it to you. And I'll tell you it's not my best painting, but I said I would show it to you. So I don't know if you could see it a little better. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Do what? Oh, show it to the camera, my daughter said. Um, I think it might be kind of dark, but I'm not sure. Can I see if it's up close? Or... <laughs> so, um, let's see. Let me put it here, and I want to leave you with a quote. You know, all these other speakers quoted the, um, some of the great people that have walked through Washington, and I want to do the same thing because I found a quote by Eleanor Roosevelt who said, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. And that's what I would love to leave you with is the idea of just keep dreaming and believing. Be passionate about what you do and take your passion and make it happen. So I thank you so much for being here. And I just, I applaud each of you. I'm happy for you. And I want you to just go far in your endeavors. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Well, that was outstanding, and I guess that one's three thousand, right? <laughs> <laughs> that might be a hundred dollar painting today. So, <laughs> it, it's. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, let's have another big hand for Carol for it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> And great, and now we get to see some other art, your art. And I uh, look forward to it. We're going to show a slideshow of all your, the winners of the 2013 art competition. And this is to celebrate your work. Congratulations, and please enjoy.
That's incredibly impressive. Um, I hope we got it everything right. I hope uh, last year a poor girl came up to me at the end and said, you hung up my picture upside down. <laughs> we fixed it, but um, yeah, you know, it's, isn't it great that we live in such a country that encouraged such tremendous expression, diversity of expression, and yet at the same time recognizes individual accomplishment? Uh, it's a great thing. And uh, again, congratulations to you, the winners of the 2013 Congressional Art Competition. Uh, you, it's all inspiring work. Now, uh, you get to go see it hanging in the hallway. I think, Carol, you'll be available for if you, people want to talk to you briefly up here sure. uh, for a while. But follow you out. You look for the people in the blue shirts. They'll lead you, and it's, it's complicated. Uh, if you've ever been here in January when they swear in new members of Congress, they send out search parties on a regular basis to find them <laughs> under the Capitol. Uh, so it's complicated. So, but if you follow the staffers with the blue shirts, they'll lead you out down the hallway where all the pictures are, and that'll take you over to the House office buildings where you can then meet with your members of Congress and, and see their offices too. Again, thank you for being here and congratulations.